Hello everyone and welcome to episode 13 of the Idle Game Maker course and in this one we're going to be diving deep into variables. They are the magic behind the scenes allowing us to create systems that respond to player actions, adapt to evolving gameplay and introduce truly endless possibilities which is why I am so so excited about them. So without further ado, let's get started. Now you might be asking, well what exactly is a variable? Well a variable is a value that can change depending on conditions or on information passed to the program. So with that said, let's take a look at these two pictures here and this is actually a very good example of what a variable is. So notice this image right here. We have a 4 which is essentially being packed into this box which has a name of my num. And then we can use this box which can contain any value whatsoever, right? We can use this box or this variable in any kind of arithmetic or algebraic operation, right? So we can we could for example do 1 plus my num in this case, it would be equal to 5 because my num holds a value of 4. And in Idle Game Maker, types of things, with the exception of layout boxes, can be used as variables in this exact same way. And in Idle Game Maker, different types of things have different ways of storing their variable values, which we will take a look at right now. First things first, let's take a look at resources. So resources store information about, first of all, their amount their production per second, then their max amount ever reached and their total earned amount. And you can access these values using these four different ways. So the amount of a resource is accessed using their thing key and their production per second is accessed using their thing key followed by the PS selector. Their max amount ever reached is accessed using their thing key followed by the max selector and their total earned amount is accessed in the exact same way except that you use the earn selector. Next up we have buttons and shinies and these things store the amount of times they have been clicked and this is accessed using their thing key followed by the click selector. Of course we cannot forget the buildings, they store their amount and their max amount ever reached similar to how the resources do it. And you can access their amount using their thing key and their max amount ever reached using their thing key followed by the max selector. And last but not least, we have upgrades and achievements. And these are actually a little bit different because they only store whether they are owned or not. And you can access this value using their thing key. And the reason why they are actually a little bit different is because they return one if they are owned and return zero if they are not owned. Or a true or false value if used in condition flow. Now condition flow is a topic for a different video so you don't exactly need to know all the specifics of this statement so one fantastic way to utilize variables is by using resources as constant variables for example let's consider the mathematical constant pi right which is always you know 3.1415 you know all the way into infinity and with idle game maker you can make use of this constant by defining it within your game as a resource if you define variables this way however you want it to contain the always hidden property because this is not something of any meaning to the player this is purely for the developers so us to use now that we have pi defined as a resource variable we can use it in various different calculations throughout our game for example Imagine you have a building that yields gold over time, right? You can make this building's output dependent on this constant pi that we have created. And by simply using a pi in the building's yield formula, you ensure that the building always produces gold at a rate influenced by the constant pi. But what's even more interesting is that you can also apply this constant to upgrades to further amplify your game's mechanics. And in this example, we've created an upgrade called pi upgrade that multiplies the yield of this building right here by pi as well. Now, hopefully through this example, you've realized that using this method, you can substitute the resource for any kind of number in a mathematical calculation or expression. This means that it is very useful for code organization and manageability. Now let's explore another fantastic use of variables in Idle Game Maker, using resources as changing variables. And this method allows you to create dynamic game mechanics that respond to the evolving state of your game world. So to demonstrate this, let's start by first defining a set of buildings. We have four different buildings here, each tagged as a gold producer and these buildings will contribute to the changing variable that we'll create. So next we'll add a resource that sums up the quantities of all the gold producer buildings in the game. The building amount resource which we created right here is dynamically calculated based on the quantities of the gold producer buildings and as you acquire these buildings the building amount will change accordingly. Now to make use of this resource let's create an upgrade that multiplies the yield of all buildings with the gold producer tag by an additional 1% for each building owned. And this upgrade is a prime example 
of how you can use variables to create complex and dynamic game mechanics. Now, using resources as changing variables is one of the most versatile uses of variables in Idle Game Maker. You can use this method to create various in-game counters, timers, complex upgrades, building effects, text effects, you can use it to display decimals and you can even use these kinds of variables to display building production info in buildings descriptions and of course much more. The possibilities are endless and it allows you to craft engaging and evolving idle games that keep the players hooked. Let's now explore multiple examples of how variables can be used in your idle game. So in this first example, we first created a gold resource, then a building to produce that resource. And this building produces one gold every second, but it also has a dynamic element by yielding an additional 0.1% of the gold's production per second. And this showcases how variables can make your buildings more interactive and responsive to the game conditions. In the next example, the building starts to produce a new resource called Super Gold once a specific upgrade is bought. And this dynamic use of variables adds depth to your game progression. Next up, this achievement multiplies the yield of all buildings by 5% once it is unlocked. And this showcases how variables can be employed to create achievement-based progression in your game. In this next example, this button yields plus one more gold with each click, but it also utilizes the clicks variable to make the yield scale. After every 20 times the button has been clicked, the yield increases by one, showing how variables can create engaging button mechanics. And in the last example, we have an upgrade that increases the yield of the button we have created here by a percentage of the gold production per second. And this dynamic upgrade mechanic relies on the gold PS variable. Now keep in mind that these examples demonstrate just a few of the countless ways variables can be used in Idle Game Maker. So, whether it's modifying yields, triggering new resources, enhancing achievements, creating interactive buttons or crafting intricate upgrades, variables are the key and your best friend. Now there is one more type of variables in Idle Game Maker and those are local variables. And similar to previously mentioned resource variables, they are values that you can set and change but only use within an effect block. And the variables created using resources we have mentioned previously can also be considered global since they can be used in the entire source file. Local variables on the other hand can only be used in the effect block they have been declared in or their value can be changed by triggering custom effects. In short, they allow you to control and manipulate values within specific effect blocks. Now for local variable syntax, it is very simple, albeit a little bit more unconventional. A local variable's name starts with a dollar symbol followed by letters and digits. And this makes it very easy to distinguish from other types of variables. Now also very important to mention is that local variables do not reset when inside a triggered effect. And now the handbook actually has a very good example for this. So. In this example provided by the handbook, we've defined a custom count effect which is triggered by clicking the count button. And within the onClick effect block, which can be seen right here, we create a local variable named total and set its value to be zero. Then the count effect is invoked on things tagged as countable, and whenever this custom effect runs, this total local variable gets incremented by one. And once this entire process concludes, it displays the final value in the game log if it is in your game. Also important to mention is that local variables are very useful for organizing your code. And what I mean by this is that with local variables, you can neatly encapsulate values and calculations within their respective effect blocks. And this not only makes your code easier to read, but also simplifies debugging and future updating of the game as well. Now with variables covered, it's time for a challenge. Your tasks for this challenge are as follows. So your first one is to add a new building and name it whatever you like. Your second task is to make it yield 4 coins per second, so far so good. And your third task is to have it require earning at least a total of 200 coins to unlock. And then your fourth and main task is to change the metal detectors on tick effect to have it yield an additional 0.1 coins for every one of this new building you own. And doing this correctly makes it scale with upgrades as well. Now also as a little side note, keep in mind that our game is still very early in development and we will fine tune the game's balance later so you don't have to worry about that at the moment. Okay, so with that that said, pause the video and give it a try and if you need help, I'll provide two hints for the fourth task since the first three should be no problem. So if you are stuck, here's the first hint. 
Utilize the new building's unique thing key as a variable to track its quantity. And if you are still stuck, here's the second hint. Implement the scaling effect, multiply 0.1 by the building's quantity variable and add it to the initial yield of 1. Alright, hopefully you gave it a go and let me know how it went in the comments. I will now guide you through the process of completing this challenge myself, so let's get into it. So I am in Pastebin right now and the first thing that we need to do is to add a building into our game. So let's hit edit and let's locate our building section, there it is. Next up let's create a new building, I'll name it Con Artist or Con Artists so that it's theme appropriate for my game. Let's give it a name as well. Next up let's add a description. Let's also add some information into the description that tells the player that the metal detectors will gain plus 0.1 base production increase for each con artist that they own. Plus 0.1 base production increase detectors per con artist owned. Next up, let's add the on tick effect, which makes it yield 4 coins. Then let's add a cost to our building, let's have it cost somewhere around probably 200 coins. We'll balance this later, since right now it doesn't really matter that much and we need it to unlock after we earned at least 200 coins. So let's just use the requirement property, 200 coins earned. And of course we can't forget that we also need the icon class for the future when we're gonna be assigning an icon to this building. Alright, and the only thing left to be done is to change the metal detectors on tick effect so that it scales with the amount of con artists you have. The way you do this is by creating creating a simple math expression. So you just do 1 plus 0.1 multiplied by the amount of con artists that you own. So let's save our changes and see how it looks in our game. Alright, so I am in our game right now and I have currently earned 196 coins and once I earn 200 the building should unlock. So let's quickly get to 200 coins and there we go. Con artists appeared in our buildings tab and when we buy one we can see that it yields us 4 coins per second. More importantly however, let's see if they actually boost the metal detector's base yield by 0.1. So let's quickly buy a metal detector to test this and our coin production per second should be 5.1 after we buy a metal detector. There we go. One last thing to test however is to see if it works with upgrades as well. So let's save up for the magnets upgrade. Okay, so after we buy the magnets upgrade, our production per second should be 6.2. We can see that it works very nicely. Okay, and that should be it for this episode. Hopefully this tutorial made you understand variables and cleared up a lot of things you might have been confused about. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. And if you really enjoy what I do here, feel free to check out my Patreon. For only $2 a month, your name can be forever etched in the outro of my videos. And I would be extremely, extremely happy if you supported me this way. So, once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.